and welcome to another edition of Inside the Burrow, the FAU podcast for and by fans. My name is Dan. I am joined by just Shane uh, tonight, and we will have a special guest from MTSU joining us. Jack could be with us this uh, week, but he'll be back again next week. And um, yeah, FAU playing Middle Tennessee. Uh, I just looked up the stats, what the, the record is. Middle, Middle is dominating this uh, this series 12 to four. Um, and, uh, th- this is a weird series. I think uh, a lot of, when you think of, uh, when you think of rivals, uh, you kind of see this as kind of a distant rival, you know, it's not quite at the same level of rivalry as, uh, you know, FIU and really that's just geographically. Um, but, uh, there's been some really close games, really some heartbreakers that have gone, uh, MTSU's way uh, to kind of bring this way, way back. MTSU was FAU's first FBS win uh, back when FAU was still an FCS team or Division One AA uh, back in 2004, I think. If you look up the, uh, you can look up the the miracle in Murfreesboro was a, a last second uh, touchdown. Um, so if you talk to some some old folks around the board, they'll they'll be able to to relive that with you and probably the radio call because I don't there was no TV back then. But um, so FAU comes into the game uh, one and zero in conference play, uh, three and two on the year. Kind of really where we thought we were going to be. Uh, surprisingly, you know, conference game uh, Vegas seems to have a lot of uh, faith in FAU. At uh, I think the latest line was ten, maybe ten and a half. Um, so, I mean, certainly this, this is this is a big game. Certainly every game from here on out is going to be a big game. Uh, but FAU with a win at Charlotte really positioned itself nicely um, to get things started headed in the right direction. And, uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll have a couple things to talk about with health uh, of some, some key spots and where FAU can take advantage of. Um, but, Shane, what, what is your, your first initial uh, thoughts in the game? Uh, that miracle Murfreesboro game was on TV. I remember it was a Tuesday. It was when the Sun Belt used to play the Tuesday night games. No, before that, the the FAU oh, okay, miracle. Okay. Yeah, the, the first the miracle. For, for, yeah, for, that's before my my time too. The the first miracle for FAU, not the miracle for. Oh, I was um, thinking. Yeah, I was thinking the Tuesday night low scoring Rusty oh, game where uh, Howard yeah. Schnellberger thought it'd be great to blitz somebody on a short hair Mary play. <laughs> Um, Ugh. or uh, whoever the, I think the, the defensive coordinator at the time was, you know, I, I think it was, uh, Hosa? yeah, it was Hosa. Yeah. And they, like, blitzed someone and he almost got him. They threw it up and th- I think they won 14, 12 that yeah. game. Um, that and then of course play. last year you had stock still just chucking it in the end zone. You had the, the review where, it, you know, they, Chris Robinson, they marked him a yard short, even though I still think. <laughs> and then I still think if you look at some replays that on the fourth and goal for middle Tennessee to score and get that down one before they went to two, I still don't even think he crossed them. Yeah. That was, like that. So there's something um, about this series. There's just, yeah, it's always... well, I mean, we've lost nine of the last 10, but it doesn't feel that way. Right. Yeah, like it, yeah. it feels um, it, and then just also just the craziness of Charlie Partridge's last game, the 56 to 77 <laughs> game where they, they were just running a wide receiver at quarterback yeah. and 700 uh, yards of offense. I think that, for yeah, I, I don't know. Is that still, I think when it happened, it was the highest scoring game in college football, uh, at the time, I think yeah. ever, I am not hundred percent sure. Cause I think Syracuse might've had a game where they broke that recently too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, this series is nuts. I, you know, I want to just flat out say I, they're our number two rival. I just think because with the history, that kind of goes back to the Sun Belt. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know some people, Marshall kind of feels like that. There's more recruits. Marshall's a little bigger name program. But just kind of with the history of Middle Tennessee, I mean, I think they're clearly our number two. I mean, yeah. you know, FEU, we always talk about we want to develop more history and, you know, tradition with the school. And this rivalry is – yeah, kind this of probably has the most. I mean, the, the yeah, most I mean, I would memorable games for sure. Way more memorable games than even our history with that history with FIU. We talk about FIU, and really, it seems like that game is just whatever team is favored usually just wins in a blowout fashion. It yeah. seems a lot of our games with FIU, but uh, most of them haven't gone our way. Like you said, we opened up 
I think we're at 11 and a half point favorites right now, which I think is fair on the surface. Uh, their defense has given up a lot of yards, uh, but it's hard to tell. They've played three power five games. Yeah. Uh, Asher O'Hare is a much improved quarterback from where he was last year. Kind of maybe a poor man stock still with his ability to run and make things happen. Uh, but we should dominate them up front Yeah, on both sides. <laughs> uh, my biggest concern going into this game is, as Lane said today in his press conference, you know, we're a little, still a little beat up at running back and corner. It's kind of what we already known. Um, you know, running back Malcolm Davis had still kind of, even though he looked great against Charlotte, I think he still was missing that like last year. It seemed like on some mm-hmm. plays, maybe he was holding back when you have a hammy, you know, you're, you're, sometimes even it's just a mental thing. You're, you you don't want to hit that last gear. And, right. and, and, and I'm not a hundred percent sure of that. Uh, and, you know, uh, Larry uh, McCammon, uh, he seemed to retweak that ankle. So, uh, you know, we were talking about before the show, ankles are just the type of thing that once you get a bad ankle sprain, they take weeks to heal. And when you kind of keep playing on it, they get it to a point where it's healthy enough to play on. And then, you know, then you got to kind of lay off it all week during practice. So you're not getting a lot of practice time. Uh, so that's tough. And James Pierre was a late scratch for Charlotte with a concussion. So who knows where he is um, in that protocol. And uh, uh, Carl Smith has been out since, you know, just I believe I, the UCF game. And he's been in a boot. You know, I, some people said they, they believe he's coming back this year. But, you know, so that's kind of leaving the outside corners – uh depth pretty low right now yeah i think that's uh i I mean fortunately uh i think you saw uh, the corners specifically uh against uh charlotte really respond but the the talent level i think is is gonna get amped up a little bit uh middle does have some some quality wide receivers certainly more so than charlotte so we'll certainly have our um have our work cut out for us. But I, uh, I keep thinking that we, we kind of have an ace up our sleeve in having Brent stock still um, be here. I'm, I'm curious to see, like, I, I wonder at what point, uh, you know, your familial ties, like how, certainly he, he, he's been around MTSU for basically, well, not his whole life, but a lot of his life, more than half of his life. And um, so I, I certainly, I think that will, that will help in game planning, but uh, certainly it's a, uh, I think will be an interesting dynamic. I, I'm, you know, think, thinking of the offense uh, last week and we have the, uh, you guys will hear our conversation with the MTSU uh, beat reporter, but he said that, that Marshall racked up, uh, I think 500 yards of offense. 571. 571. And they only scored 13, 14 points. So, you know, Chris Robinson, I would not be surprised. Again, it, it seems, uh, oh, oh, he's going to throw for another 330 uh, and two or three touchdowns. Uh, I think that, that will offense will certainly not be the key. You know, we'll, uh, again, the, the, these games are, are, are kind of flukes. Um, but I think, is the defense going to be okay? Uh, you know, are we going to be okay at corner? Uh, and be able to basically keep them from getting close while FAU kind of extends its leads. I think we can be okay without running backs. Um, again, be, just because of the way that we uh, are, you know, more pass first. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I thought it'd be an interesting dynamic if we could just keep them at bay long enough to basically keep uh, the game away. I kind of disagree. I think we kind of need to get <clears> – <throat> As much as I loved it for us to go out there and throw the ball around, I think we kind of need to get close to that 200 yards mark in the okay. game just to control a little bit more. Middle Tennessee offense is good. They have a lot of skill positions. They're running backs, not that – I mean, Asher O'Hare has, I think, 76 carries on the season. Uh, I thought it was even 60. He has, like, twice as many carries as their – number one running back only has 31 on the season. So it seems like at times they just, it, and granted they've been down a lot, their early games, uh, cause of that schedule, but it, it seems like they kind of just abandon the run and it's kind of Astro O'Hare just kind of consistently playing backyard football. And when you play a team that, you know, has an athletic quarterback and plays backyard football, you know, if they hit on the right day, they can just kind of yeah. beat you. And we've seen yeah. that with stock still. I know it's, it's like, man, I thought we were going to get rid of this type of quarterback. And <laughs> just a little alarming 
we saw against Charlotte that your Chris Reynolds is able to make some plays yeah. uh, in kind of these unscripted type plays, you know, down the field. So, and Middle Tennessee's receivers are way better than Mark. I mean, than um, Charlotte. Charlotte yeah. So, and I even do think to a level Middle Tennessee is going to get theirs. You know, I, I think, you know, you walk into this and you say, okay, let's hold them under 25 points. And if we hold them under 25 points, we'll win this game and cover the spread. Yeah. So I, I think we're going to get to that 38, 40 number. Uh, just don't let them get hot. And the big thing is we, t- you know, football's football's a pretty basic sport. We don't turn over the ball, give them those yeah. extra possessions, uh, you know, and, and I'm always curious to see out of a bye week I know it's, there's a, most of the time there's this huge assumption of, well, you're supposed to be better out of the bye week and extra week to prepare and practice and stuff like that. You know, sometimes teams are just better when they're playing game. They get in their rhythm, you know, creature right. athletes are creatures of habit. Uh, and then they, they get in that game things. It's like, okay, we have, you know, physical practice on Monday, Tuesday, uppers, Wednesday, walk through Thursday, maybe another little walk through Friday morning and then travel or go and they get in kind of in that rhythm. And sometimes, you get a bye week and you get out of that rhythm, especially when you're playing well. Lane said it, you know, after Charlotte, like it's good. We have some injuries where we need to get healed, but he's like, we're playing well. So you don't really want to buy yeah. week playing well sometimes. That, that was um, tough so sure. you, you're always a little worried about a little bit of rust, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't be, certainly wouldn't be surprised. Uh, would be surprised at that. I wonder, you know, first play of the game, if we'll have a, another D'Angelo Antoine, uh, end around. I would I wouldn't be surprised. I'm also curious to see and we kind of talked about this at the end of the show last week about Tronti. Um, you know, there there was he comes in as, as a running quarterback. I think most people see that. But Shane, you mentioned that we'd like, you know, you'd like to see him pass, you know, do something other than that. So just to keep the defense honest, and I think there was there was that one basically one play at the end of the game that got blown up that I think he was going to pass, but. Well, not, not even so much of the pass. <coughs> My biggest concern is sometimes switching quarterback in, with our offense and the offense wants to go fast. It, yeah. It's disrupting rhythm sometimes, you know, taking if you know, and, and I think they're going to start Toronto and drive. So that happens if Chris comes out and completes three passes in a row, they're not taking him out. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I'm just, a little, you know, I'm just curious to see how they handle that because, yeah, when it's working, it's going great. But sometimes switching quarterbacks can quickly go south. Uh, yeah. You know, it's- we well, and we we kind of saw that where um, I can't remember. Yeah, it must have been the Charlotte game where uh, Tronti there was either two sacks or something like that, and then Robinson came out for like third and twenty three. Uh, you know. Yeah, it was, it's like you yeah. know. We're, Sometimes when we're throwing the ball for 300 yards and, you know, I, I know uh, Robinson that he doesn't provide the same running ability as Toronto. You know, he's more of a yeah. pocket passer. But sometimes it's like, you know, we're, we're, you know, especially this week, uh, at FTSU, like we said, they have two good safeties, but, you know, we should be able to pick on their corners yeah, all day. So it's like, you know, give me three downs with Robinson throwing out their corners and I'll take those odds that, you know, we're going to be able to complete one of them for 10 yards or two of them at least combined to give us a, uh, you know, a first down and keep the chains moving. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, th- this is um, this is definitely a, a big game. And we have uh, somebody from MTSU on the show with us today. Uh, we recorded it previously. So we, we were able to um, – to get a guest from MTSU on with us. Sorry, there, there's no video for this. Things kind of got messed up when we recorded it earlier. Um, but uh, yeah, please enjoy our interview with Joe from MTSU. All right, and now we have uh, Joe Spears from the Daily News Journal, uh, who was kind of going to give us some background and some insider information, if you will, uh, on MTSU. And uh, so welcome to the show, Joe. Thanks for being on with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll kind of get things started here. Um, you know, I always like to kind of go with some more uh, thousand, you know, 10,000 level, uh, foot level uh, question. So what is your, what is your kind of breakdown of the makeup of this team this year? Are they where they are supposed to be coming off a big win last week? But 
um, you know, what's kind of been the, the vibe for this year and where do you think this team is right now as far as, you know, are they on pace where they should be or, or what? Um, you know, I think the big question going into the year was what will this team look like without Brent Stock still at quarterback? He was here for a while. He's actually down there now coaching with FAU. Um, he's on that staff. But that was the big question going into the year. And I think through the first uh, four games before Marshall, you were really trying to get a sense of just how good this team was on both sides of the ball. They returned seven starters on defense. But with – it, with them, they played Marshall or not. Mar- they played uh, Michigan, Duke, and uh, Iowa to start the year. Two of those on the road. So I, I, I wasn't really expecting to see what this team was until until this past Saturday, where they played Marshall and um, they gave up 578 yards on defense, which is a lot. But they actually held Marshall to 13 points. So uh, I, I still think we're getting a sense of what this team is. Is the defense will bend, but they won't break. And the offense uh, is still trying to figure out its identity. Asher O'Hare is the quarterback now, and he's played well. Um, but they can't they, – they, they're relying on him for a lot of the run game. Uh, they really haven't found that identity. I think wide receiver is their biggest strength on the offensive side of the ball. So I think these next couple of weeks will be telling, especially in conference play, going down to FAU. And then next week they go to North Texas, which won't be an easy game at all. So – um, I think they're trending up with the win against Marshall, uh, considering how bad the loss at Iowa was. But I still think we're getting a sense of just how good this team can be. Wow. To, to give up <laughs> – that's got to be some sort of record for Marshall to have that many yards and score that few amount of points. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, uh, um, that, that, it, it, that's quite something. They had they they had five possessions in the second half. Three ended on uh, turnovers on downs, and then uh, they had two interceptions on their final two drives of the game. Uh, I, the defense, I mean, it was that bend but don't break mentality. But I think they're they're still giving up way too many big plays. And I think heading into next into this week, uh, they got to correct a lot of that. And I think they know that. Uh, I I found one interesting stat uh, regarding MTSU this year that Asher O'Hare kind of seems to be doing it all. He's currently leading the team in rushing attempts with 60, uh, with just over 60. Um, and the top running back only has 31 carries on the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it, you know, it just, is that just, you know, kind of with the play calling or do they just not have faith in their running backs at this point? Um, I think it's a little bit of, uh, with, with three of the games, three of those games, they really, uh, they were playing down from from the get go with Iowa, Duke, and Michigan, Tennessee State. They tried to run the ball a little more. They really didn't establish any run game with the with the running back until the fourth quarter. Um, but they've they've got four capable guys. I would say that can run the ball. I'm not I, I I'm not sure what it is. The play calling's been weird against uh, Marshall. They started off the game really running the ball down Marshall's throat, and it looked good. They had over 80 yards in the first quarter on the ground. Um, and then after that, they really went away from it and just tried throwing the ball or they let Asher throw the ball. Um, I know coach stock still would like to see Asher not run the ball as much. Uh, he says there are times where he just kind of, he tucks it and runs if his first reads not there. Um, but it, so far for the most part, it's really worked out for him. He's, he's kind of a magician in the pocket. Really. He can just, uh, if it, if a play's breaking down, he'll take it up the field five to 10 yards. But um, I, I would expect, them to start really trying to establish the run more as they get into conference play um, they're going to need to uh, when they play offenses like FAU's in North Texas where uh, if, if they want to win the game they're going to have to control the clock yeah for sure I think uh, if FAU fans hearing the amount of the uh, the yards and kind of what went wrong for for Marshall I think they'll be they'll be pretty excited uh, to play this weekend mm-hmm. um what do you think is, I guess, for, you know, for casual FAU fan that is uh, listening to this, who is um, – can you give me a player, one on defense, one on offense, that they should they should keep an eye out that potentially, you know, could be um, – you know, not necessarily a game changer, but somebody that they should keep their eye on, one on offense, one on defense? Uh, with defense, you got to look at the safeties. You could go Reed Blankenship or Javante Moffitt. I would go Moffitt. He's coming off. Uh, the best game of the year. Uh, He had 14 tackles, a pair of interceptions, and he actually on 
uh, one of Marshall's fake field goal attempts, he, he single-handedly kept that from being a touchdown. So uh, he's really been playing great so far this year. He only played four games last year. He took a redshirt year. Um, I know one of the games was FAU. He played against Marshall last year as well, had 17 tackles in that game. Uh, but overall, he's playing really well this year, um, and it's really been helpful uh, take some of the pressure off Reed, who last year was kind of the go-to guy in the secondary. Um, offensively, I mean, you could look at a guy like Tylee who's been around. One guy that's really impressed me is Jaron Pierce. He's a JUCO transfer wide receiver from California. He's uh, He's been one of Asher's favorite targets this year and he's not the fastest guy he's not the biggest guy but he's got crisp route running and uh he doesn't really drop any of the passes thrown his way he's been really good this year he's actually leading the team uh in receptions and yards and i think he's second on touchdown reception so um those two guys have really stood out to me so far this year okay nice um <clears throat> excuse me uh what what do you make of uh, Coach Stockdale's son. I think FAU fans, I I would say that you probably won't find an FAU fan that is uh, unhappy that uh, Stockdale is here with us just because of the – really every game, going back to, you know, F- MTSU was FAU's first Division One, uh, Division One a back in the day, uh, FBS win. Um you know, there's, there always seem, no matter how good or bad the teams are, this this, this game always seems to be uh, seems to be a close one. But what what do you make of uh, Coach's son going down to really a, a, a fairly good rival? Certainly not as MTSU and uh, it's not FAU, not the biggest rival, but certainly in conference. What is um you know what's been kind of the the talk this week about that? Yeah, I, I think uh, even going back to when at one, after Brent graduated and he was done and, you know, looking for a job, um, I talked to Coach Stock still, and he said he had high hopes for Brent in this profession. And then once uh, once it was announced that he was going down there, I mean, he was happy that he was coaching for – he has a lot of respect for Lane Kiffin, and uh, he's really excited about him being on that staff, and he thinks it's going to be good for Brent in the long term. Um, he was asked about that today, you know, what's it going to be – are the – he says he talks to Brent every day or every chance he gets. He hasn't really seen him in a while uh, with them being away from each other now. But he uh, he said he was excited to see Brent on Saturday. He said he's going to hug his neck. And uh, <laughs> he said he, he's always rooted for Brent his entire life, and this will be the first time that he's not rooting for him. So I, I think it's kind of a cool little dynamic. And um, I think Coach Stockstill is really excited that Brent down there on that coaching staff uh, – He's so familiar with Conference USA, obviously, because he's been around yeah. it for these last five, six years. Um, and now he's getting to coach and getting to coach against his dad, which that, that'll that be cool for him, I think. But I think it's a really cool dynamic. And I know Coach Stockstill is really excited about finally seeing him on Saturday and uh, getting to see him across the way will be really cool for him. Uh, you know, I had kind of asked you, you mentioned kind of with the, the secondary of MTSU, uh, wide receiver has been kind of a surprise, really strong position uh, for FAU. And I know you said, you know, we know, you know, with Lankership being back there, uh, but, I, you know, we were kind of talking before that MTSU's kind of given up the big play this year. I mean, do you foresee mm-hmm. kind of MTSU having enough to stop at, you know, all of FAU's weapons and kind of their big plays? Uh, I, that's, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, corner was a position that they were kind of worried about going into the year. I mean, they won't say that, but they lost some guys and, um, they're starting, they're starting some guys out there that have never really played. Um, and so far there have been times where they just, they just get burned. Um, they're, they're really learning the position as it goes. They got a lot of young guys, some freshmen and sophomores out there playing corner. Um, one guy, Desmond Anderson, he's a senior, but this is his first full-time starting at corner. Um, so there's been some growing pains there. Um, and like I said, they've been giving up the they've been giving up the big play a lot lately. And Coach Stock still talked about that being something that they really wanted to address this year. Um, and, and I think a big a big part of them giving up the big play maybe doesn't fall on the shoulders of the corners as much of outside of Marshall the three games prior to that they MTSU's really struggled to get pressure on the quarterback they struggled even against Tennessee State 
not a whole lot of pressure giving the co- opposing quarterback, whoever it is, a lot of time to throw. And in and, and turn, they, they've they been able to torture him. I remember against Iowa, Nate Stanley, I counted, he had 12 seconds on one play to throw the ball. Um, and he ended up hitting a guy for a 30-yard gain. So uh, there, I, there was pressure um, against Marshall, but granted Marshall's quarterback could run. Um, I, he, was, he was a great runner, um, and that really torched MTSU for a lot of yards. But uh, I think there have been a lot of growing pains, but I also think that also falls on the front seven as well for not getting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, you know, Stockstill's kind of been there for a while in Middle Tennessee, you know, from an outside, outside perspective and has been kind of a model of consistency. But I know, you know, the fans there are probably, you know, from over here and read from the message boards that there's kind of a want for more. I, you know, we know they made the championship game last year. What is kind of the fans feeling with Stockstill right now? Uh, you know, would you say there's, there's any sort of hot seat or anything with him right now or warm, I should say? I, I wouldn't think so, especially with how con, con, uh, consistent they've been. I think with college football in general, when you've had a coach for a while and um, if you're not winning national championships or a bowl game every year, um, fans get restless. Um, I, I, I think that's kind of the feeling. And I, I've talked to Coach Stock still. Um, about you know that and getting fans to the game and um, all that stuff and uh, they did they played just such a tough schedule I know uh, Michigan Iowa and Duke I mean that was that was those were three of their four non-conference games this yeah. year and then last year you get Kentucky at Kentucky which again they they could have won if not for a couple turnovers realistically they were in that from the beginning but also Vanderbilt they went to Vanderbilt and that was a bad loss but um, they also went to Georgia, and they've played Alabama. So they, they play a really tough non-conference schedule. Um, so, I mean, you lose three or four of those games, and you're already looking at a seven, eight-win season, nine-win season if you, you win out in Conference USA. And I think a, a big thing uh, that isn't really getting looked at is how consistent they've been at home. Last year, they went undefeated at home, um, and they only their only loss at home was the Conference USA Championship to UAB another game they could have won. So uh, I think like with any college football program that's had a coach who's been here for a while, I mean, this is Stock's 13th year here or 14th, 13th or 14th. And there, there may be restlessness, but I think there's, I think a lot of people view them as, you know, one of the most consistent programs in conference USA, uh, even though, you know, they're not winning 10, 11 games a year. Yeah. Those not conference uh, I think we talked about this last week uh, for, for FAU. Those not conference games. Uh, that sounds more like a, a Sun Belt schedule than than Conference USA. You know, you have that many money games against that quality of an opponent. Yeah, you know, like FAU used to do that in the Sun Belt, where all mm-hmm. well, basically all four of them were were that way. So um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Shane, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no. I don't, I don't, I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we definitely appreciate you being on the show with us and uh, we look forward. Are, are you making the trip down to uh, DeBoca? I am. I'm flying down Friday night and I'm hopefully leaving Sunday evening so I can at least spend one day down there not working. Cool. Nice. Well, uh, certainly uh, Shane and I can, can help you out with any, uh, with any dinner destinations or, or what beats to go to, because there's they're, they're not all the same. But uh, we we appreciate you being on the show with us. Where can uh, you know if Owl fans or anybody listening to the podcast who wants to uh, hear more from you, where where's the best place for them to get you? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Joe underscore Spear seven, and yeah, I'll have updates throughout the week uh, leading up to the game on there. All right. Um, well, yeah. Again, we appreciate you being on, and um, uh, safe travels. All right. Appreciate it, guys. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that uh, interview. I think it was kind of uh, interesting to get his take on uh, the coaching, uh, the you know, coaching father-son dynamic that will happen. I think that, that will also be something fun to watch this weekend. But um, so this game uh, and, and we'll, you know, before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about Conference USA and then we'll also talk about kind of what this game means, but certainly the, the biggest, one of the biggest things to take away from conference USA East is middle Tennessee 
beating Marshall, you know, certainly putting themselves in the driver's seat. And then for me, Western Kentucky, Western looks good. Um, you know, somehow they're, they're three and Owen conference. I guess they, they had a conference heavy start to the year, but um, I don't know, Shane, what was your, what was your take from this weekend's conference USA games? Well, I, I think Marshall's kind of a mess right now. Um, as good as Marshall is, is that, you know, their quarterback situation is, uh, Western Kentucky's the surprise. Uh, they, they really ha- don't have an impressive win. I mean, I guess we <clears throat> UA, but UAB's kind of down this year, and they beat FIU. They're kind of just winning these close games, and their quarterback's kind of game managing, and their defense is playing uh, sturdy. I, here's the thing. These next two games, uh, we talked about this, and this has been talked about on the forum. This is no uh, mystery take. If FEU wins and, you know, wins convincingly his next two games, we'll, the East is ours for the taking. It, yeah. it, we're going to kind of run away with it. Uh, it. Especially if we go out and show we're, four, you know, t- two scores better than Middle Tennessee. Uh, yeah. We're lining up to see, you know, FEU Southern Miss, FEU North Texas again. Uh, you know, we, we should – I know it's kind of rat poison, but, you know, we'll, we'll – we'll show that we're just clearly better than these other two other teams. We go split these two. Um, it's not over, but then it's, you know, I still think, you know, we'll definitely go bullying and stuff, but then we're going to just be in some three way tie at the end of the year where it comes down to like some ridiculous thing, like road points or something, right, yeah. you know, just, you know, then yeah. it's it, maybe we're a little closer to the field than we thought. So this is going to be kind of, this has been – this is FE's most important game on the schedule so far. I mean, I know UCF was huge, but in reality to what everything means for the conference and stuff, we go out there again. We win this by 14 points. You know, we're going to line up and have a, another really nice season. You know, yeah, then it, it's, sure. it, we'll be cruising at that mm-hmm. point. So, and you know, it'll start to get that snowball – like it did in 2017 where it's yeah and you know. middle really was the catalyst for that if you remember that game um there was uh the first time we had beaten middle in well in, in for 10 mm-hmm. years nine years whatever and then things just just you know blowing middle out that game that was you know uh everybody remembers one of motor singletary's greatest moves uh that game i believe and um yeah, I mean, that that really, like you said, that snowball will start rolling, and middle was really the catalyst for when that happened. Um, and, you know, no excuse for you not to get out there. It's going to be a great weekend, 4 o'clock start. You know, I'm hopeful for a big turnout. Yeah, I like. Uh, I, I thought it was great that, uh, you know, Rick posted today that the weather is supposed to be, you know, I know FAU, it's always knock on wood with weather, but, you know, all the reports were saying that uh, – a front's going to try and push its way through and it's, it's supposed to be rainy all this week, but like Saturday, the humidity is supposed to drop like 20 points, be a couple degrees cooler and a nice breeze. So we're going to have like a perfect October day, mid afternoon kickoff time, really no big games going against us. They're before or after. So it's, it's one of those things where FAU kind of gets like this. If you're in the area, you should, you should be at this game. You know, every person, that came with you to the UCF game. That's an FAU fan. You should be texting me like, Hey, you coming this week? Yeah. yeah I, this, for sure. This will be a, another test for the FAU, um, you know, uh, operations department to see, cause this, this will certainly be, it should be uh, a good turnout. We'll have a, a great Florida fall uh, where the temperature is roughly the same, but the humidity drops. So it, it's much more bearable outside. Um, yeah, it's one of those fronts where it goes from, you know, 86 to 84. But, you know, it's, it's a big difference. So, I mean, it'll yeah. be – there's just really, again, no excuse this weekend. So, And I know we're kind of preaching to a choir. I mean, if you're listening to an FAU podcast, you're probably definitely going to the game unless you're, at you know, just out of state. But, yeah. you know, it's kind of like the onus is on you that those five people that came with you to the UCF game, hit them up, be like, let's go this week. Yeah, definitely. Um, and game is on ESPN plus for those that are out of town um, and make sure remember that you can listen to uh, the voice of the owls, Ken Levicka on the tune in app, download that um, and check that out. So 4 PM, uh, you don't got to get up too early. The tailgates sun will be going down after halftime. I mean, it's, it's really, this is uh there's, there's no better time of year 
right now for us. And um, so we're hopeful, uh, we're hopeful for a good turnout and uh, certainly the, the best result with FAU winning. And um, so, yeah, with that, um, we thank you guys for joining us with the show, for following along. Again, make sure you check out FAULSNest.com for all the latest recruiting news, uh, which there should be some posted soon this week uh for all the latest recruiting news for all certainly the the game week thread and um you know check us out on twitter at inside the borough and go from there yeah uh to carry us hawthorne decided to commit just as uh, we started recording this so uh you know the, by the time this gets up there will be a story up and yeah keep following for recording uh you know thanks for everyone that's been following the recruiting news the uh one of the Frank Gore videos this weekend got over 30,000 views Yeah, on the outset pretty, is, you know, pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, I mean, recruiting is really starting to get uh, hyped up for FAU. Yeah. So um, again, we thank you guys for joining us and we will see you next week. Go Owls.